Hello, and welcome to my next quick tutorial, and I'm going to show you something a little bit different today. So when you program, I always like to have at least two screens, possibly even three. But the problem is, not everyone can afford extra monitors, and not everyone can lug around an extra screen wherever they go. But there's actually a fix for this, and you can do this with any second screen. So basically what I have here is my laptop here, and then I have a webcam pointed at my Android tablet here in the corner. So you can see here I have this program called Juice SSH. Now, basically you need an SSH client on the second screen. It can be Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, Windows, all of them have SSH clients. Just have to find them. Windows is putty, Mac has it built in, uh, Android and iOS, you just have to get from the, uh, the store where you download apps. They all have them. For this one, I picked this Juice SSH client because it actually supports landscape, uh, a landscape orientation. Not all SSH clients actually have landscape. And this one is also free. So let's go ahead and load that. And sorry about the lines, it's just from the camera. Hopefully that'll go away a little bit. And I basically put the IP address of this laptop into the tablet here. So I'm going to connect to it. And I'm going to put the password in. Cover the camera. Okay. Now you can see that I'm basically logged into the same machine. So I have the Chef 17 here and my system name is here. It's basically essentially the same. I'm logged in from Android here into my laptop. Now the command we want to do is we want to make sure we first have a program called screen installed. And I installed screen before in a different tutorial. I actually did a whole tutorial on how screen works. So we're actually going to use screen to mirror from this Android tablet on or from the laptop onto the Android tablet. So to do that, we do screen dash capital S and the name you want. So we want to do tablet one. Now the name really doesn't matter here because we're only using one screen, but this will work on three or four or five or unlimited devices that you have. So as many SSH client screens you have, this will work on. And you want to name the client according to which tab you're on here. So we're just going to do screen dash S tablet one and hit enter. And it looks like nothing happened. But here you just type in screen minus X and the session name here. We don't have to specify because we only have one. And now anything I type here will show up on the tablet itself. Now you can see here it's screwed up a little bit the size of this. The, the down here with the keyboard cut off the terminal on how big it is. So to fix that, let's get rid of the keyboard here. So here you just click the screen and then you click the keyboard tab here. And now you'll see the line there. And on the laptop, you hit Control A, Capital F. And you can see those lines disappeared and went basically to the bottom of the screen. And now you have full screen. So now when I run top, and hopefully this will focus better after I run top. Sorry about it. I tried to have this camera focus a little bit better every time. But it has a hard time focusing when there's not a whole lot of text on the screen. And all the flickering is only because of the camera. So you can see right here, we're using about 20% of the CPU cycles. And this is actually really nice to do. Because say I have to run a new script here. So I ran a new tab. And I have Python 3 here. And I'm just going to do while true, we're going to do, uh, sorry, let's do x equals 3, while true, we're going to do x times equals 3, and going to do print, the value of x is, and we're going to spit it out to the string. We need to convert from a integer to a string. I did a whole tutorial on this. Uh, if you go back and watch my Python tutorials and as soon as I press enter here, it's going to eat so many CPU cycles. This number here will, will go way up. Now, if you were running a script and you didn't know if it was causing that, you can just watch it on the tablet. And you can see here immediately that number went from 80 
down to 64. Now it's even lower, down to 50. So this is really nice that you can have a script running and monitoring it here while you're watching top on your second screen. It even hit 46 there and 43. So it's really, really eating all the CPU cycles here. So let's close it out here. If I hit control C, it'll stop. This number should go back to about 80. So that's one. The first scenario I have is watching top on a remote machine or even your machine. The next thing I use this for is, so let's get out of the top on this machine. I have to watch some scripts that run 10, 20, 30 minutes, even hours long. So I'll start them in this, I'll start this on the output of the tablet. So we can just do uh, print, this script is running and I'm watching it on the tablet and put so you can see here now I can should put us I should put sleep in here let's actually do that we'll make this a little bit better so we want to do import time let's actually do an x equals one we can do while true Move this up a little bit, and we'll do print. Uh, the loop has ran times. Just for a little bit better output, we want to do x plus equals one. So we want to add x each time, and now we want to do a time dot sleep. So this doesn't go as fast. And now when you press one, enter here, you'll see that every time this will change. Now you can go on your, onto your next tab or back on the internet or whatever you need to do. And you can see here that you can watch it on the tablet as it runs. And you'll know when it finishes and you can let anyone know that, hey, I just deployed production or I deployed stage with my script and it, everything's working and it's all done. So that's actually another, the second scenario I use for this, this, this second screen setup. So the last thing I do with, you just come back to this tab and they'll always match from here to here. So let's just close out of this. Most of the times you'll have a script that finishes and then you can let anyone know. A little bit more advanced if you've ever programmed in something called Django, which is a Python based web framework, you know that you start a server um, like this and just says Python manage run server. So this tab contains the, uh, the server running for your Django app. You don't have to really worry about your Django app. I'm going to try to get this camera to focus a little bit better. Um, but what's nice about this is that I can open up this tab, bring it over here, and sorry, this camera isn't focusing very well. But anytime I refresh this, you'll see the output from the terminal on your tablet. So you can actually monitor what it's doing here. So you can actually see that each of these, these this was a get command, it gave a status 304. These were uh, 200 here. If I click this, you'll actually see that I do a redirect here, so it's status 302. And it's just a small example of how you can watch the web server running, this Django web server running, without even needing it on um, side by side with your app. So many times I'll have this here. I'll have a second terminal open. And I'll be programming in this second terminal while watching this window on the tablet. So every time I refresh it here, you'll see a change here. Every time I do anything here, so I can write, let's do work on YouTube Django. And let's go in here. 
And if you ever have programmed in Django, you know if you make a mistake in any of the scripts, and the text is so big it kind of cuts it off here, so I'm going to fix that a little bit. But if you ever make a mistake here, so if, say I put two equals here, the Django web server will warn you here, but it won't warn you here. So unless you're watching this tab here, and the text is just really big for the YouTube video. If you're not watching this here on the tablet, you won't actually know that you made a mistake. So if I say I just do insert equals here and I put two equals instead of one, and this is basically invalid syntax for a Django models uh, app, you'll see that the output here died here. And it even says, it says max length not defined. It tells you what line number here is 19. So it's really nice to be able to program here and watch the output of the Django app. I'm not even sure this will work. So, so this died even. So you got to be careful and always watch the output of this Django stuff too. And you don't, don't worry about what Django is. I will eventually probably do some tutorials on it. But if you're familiar with running a web server in a terminal, this is really helpful to have it on the second screen. So let's remove this equals right out the file and you'll see a change here with no errors. And then when I refresh this, it'll work again. So that's how you can use a second screen setup. Now it's not just limited to one screen. Like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, it can be two, three, four. If you have unlimited tablets, uh, you can essentially do this as many times as you want. The other thing that's really nice is that tablets have become super cheap. If you go on Amazon.com, you can get a tablet, I think, for 50 bucks or even less. If you go to Walmart, you can even get ones for, I think, $35. So you're not really, the budget for having a second screen is very reasonable now if money is a concern for you. Um, another thing I would suggest if money's a, a super big concern to you and you have a TV that has HDMI in, which I think most people do at this point, is to buy a Google Chromecast. So a Chromecast is essentially just a device that has HDMI on, on it. So you'd plug that into your TV and you can cast a tab from Google Chrome onto the TV. And of course, Google Chrome, uh, uh, the Chrome app, has an SSH client on it. So if you just go to the Google store there and just search for SSH client, you'll find tons of them. All the Chromebooks have SSH actually built in. Uh, it's a little bit hidden, but you can actually do that. So what you would wanna do is cast that tab from your Chromebook to your TV, and then you'll have essentially the same second screen experience for $35 with a Chromecast. And then, then you have a Chromecast to do other stuff like cast he, uh, videos and all types of stuff. So that's another option. And with the Chromecast, you don't even have to use the screen, the screen stuff here, because essentially that's sending the output of the tab to the TV. So that's your options. You can use a Chromecast. You can use an Android tablet, which I used here. The other thing that's nice about here, you can always go back and see, you can see all the, the stuff I was running. You can even see the script I was running before. So it actually has some history here. Um, you can use an, uh, iOS, Apple, Linux, uh, and Windows even. Windows, I recommend Putty, which is an SSH client on Windows. And you'll have to use the same screen set up here. And the, the last thing you need to do just to get out of this is just hit Control C. And then once you see if you hit Control D again, you're basically logging out and you'll see screen, screen is terminating. Basically that means that this is no longer linked. So you can see here, when I type on the desktop or on the laptop, it doesn't show up on the tablet anymore because I closed out of the screen session. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, post them in the comments below and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.